This surveillance video captures the horrific shooting. The gunman walks into this corner deli, raises his gun, and fires multiple times. And I'm Bill Ritter. There's no question that crime is up. There's no question that these horrific high-profile tragedies need to stop. And there's no question that this fear of crime is real and growing. But there are many questions about how to regain control of our streets, our subways, and our city. And the answer's not easy. Over the next half hour, we are going to examine what could be behind this recent spike in violence, from homelessness and mental health to illegal guns and bail reform. But perhaps more importantly, we're also looking for solutions, like how neighborhood groups can help fight crime and which reforms need to be reformed again. We'll also provide practical information like how to stay safe and vigilant on the subway, including where to sit and where to stand. Our coverage begins now with Eyewitness News reporter N.J. Burkett. Whether it's a residential street in the Bronx or a subway station in Midtown Manhattan, New Yorkers feel more vulnerable tonight than they have in years. It's just a very sad situation, um, what's going on in New York City. I hope New York City gets better. Violent crime has been rising over the past two years, with crazed, unstable people in the subways and fearless teenagers with guns. Shootings that once took place in back alleys now happen on crowded streets in the middle of the afternoon. Gang members blasting at one another with bystanders caught in the crossfire. Among the latest victims, an infant struck in the face with a stray bullet. Police officers are being shot, and unsuspecting subway riders are being attacked at random. Others are being robbed. In the past two months, it's become an onslaught. Certainly the levels of safety that we saw during the last 10 years are now being reversed, and it's a serious moment. No one should undermine how serious this is. There were 485 murders in New York City in 2021, the highest total in 10 years. There were more than 1,500 shootings, the highest in 15 years, and double the number just two years ago. And underground, major felonies are surging. Bronx DA Darcel Clark. It's not just the law. You know, it's people thinking that they can get away with whatever they want. That's where we are now, which is, you know, really scary, just a total disrespect for humanity. The age at which somebody first picks up a gun is getting younger and younger and younger. We now have 12 and 13 year olds picking up guns and carrying. We really better, we really better focus on that. Aborn believes Mayor Adams understands the crisis, but needs to act quickly. I think he has a very short window to put a cap on the rise in crime. I think it will come down, but it's gonna come down gradually. Aborn is convinced that targeted anti-gun patrols can be done legally and that federal agents have a role to play. We need to set up true interstate strike forces to go after the illegal guns coming up what we call the iron pipeline from Pennsylvania, the Carolinas, Texas, Alabama, and Georgia, and Virginia. The feds could help us do that tomorrow morning. Darcel Clark is convinced that coordinated investigations will help turn the tide. We're putting in together investigations that are phenomenal. And once we get them now, it's going to be able to stick because every agency is working together. And no, experts say this is not the 1970s all over again. You heard Mr. Aborn say a moment ago that the mayor has a relatively short window. He says a few months to try to stop the trend, but driving down crime in New York City, he says, will likely take the better part of a year. The Census Bureau showed just how many people hightailed it out of the city at the height of the pandemic. More than 300,000 people moved out of the five boroughs. And now a new study found that many people who work in Manhattan don't want to be here either. As Richard Giacoba shows us, the one big reason is safety. Since the early days of the pandemic, moving trucks, empty streets, and apartments seem to have become a staple all across the five boroughs. Between rising crime and homelessness, a large percentage of New Yorkers who make up the city's private sector workforce think it may be best to leave. Is the city going to be safe? or are we gonna drift back into conditions where we just can't 
be in the streets and the subway. According to a new poll conducted by Partnership for New York City, 40% of employees who live in Manhattan are thinking of fleeing. Nearly half in the other four boroughs felt the same. New York City Mayor Eric Adams recently launched a number of initiatives to tackle crime and homelessness. Adams insisting tonight that he's committed to a better quality of life. We have methods to make sure those who are impoverished receive the services. We've reached a point in the city where rules don't matter, and I'm not accepting that. But despite those thinking about leaving, it turns out more than 300,000 New Yorkers between April 2020 and July of last year have already gone, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. Hold the politicians' feet to the fire. Have them fix this mess so we can get back to the city we love. That same poll reveals that a majority of New Yorkers, 70 percent of them, are actually committed to the city and its recovery. But they also acknowledge that something needs to be done soon or else the greatest city in the world may never come back. On the east side, Richard Chiacobis, Fox 5 News. About um, drill music, there's a lot of talk about the violence that's associated with it. One on one with Brooklyn rapper Mano. Mano just brought some of the biggest names in hip hop to City Hall, including rapper Fabio Foreign. And so the man could get a, a real perspective and a real understanding of what drill rap is. In recent weeks, two drill rappers have been murdered in Brooklyn. Friday Mayor Eric Adams expressed his concerns over drill songs and videos posted to social media that reference ongoing gang wars, telling Pix 11 News. It is alarming. Nobody was talking to the direct artist that comes from that element. Mano says he went to City Hall hoping to set the record straight. The conversation gets deep because, it's, you know, um, a lot of these kids, they in gangs before they even made a rap, a rap record. So is it is it the music? I don't think it's the music that's uh, 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 getting uh, the average person to do crime. After his sit down with hip hop leaders today, the mayor expressed. Violent people who are using drill rapping to post who they killed and then antagonize the people who they are going to kill is what the problem is and they heard me contrary to recent headlines declaring the mayor wants to shut down or crush drill music mayor adams made clear he's committed to working with the hip-hop community jelani ray is a music industry executive and the founder of guns for grants the mayor also let it be known that you know we have a, uh, a responsibility as being influencers and uh, the rappers that were there. Drama, controversy, and concern over rap lyrics certainly isn't new. 30 years ago, they wanted to ban Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. Mano hopes the new open dialogue between rappers and the mayor will lead to a new partnership that works to ensure hip hop lyrics don't lead to real life violence. We're going to be rolling out something in the next few days to deal with this issue. It was a great conversation. I was happy to have them there. Dozen people shot in New York City just since the Brooklyn subway attack on Tuesday morning. The latest victim is a 23 year old woman from the Bronx who was just sitting in her car when she got caught in crossfire. Take a look at the video uh, showing one of the suspects police are looking for firing off those fatal shots. One of them fatally struck Sally and Tim in the head. It happened just after eight. 30 Tuesday night at Sheridan Avenue and McClellan Street in the Concourse Village section of the Bronx. Police say two men started shooting at each other and one of the bullets hit at him who was in the passenger seat of a parked car nearby. Doctors at Lincoln Hospital tried to save her, but her injuries were too severe. The Tim had reportedly just opened up her own salon when her life was cut abruptly short. The influx of gun violence citywide since Tuesday has Mayor Adams calling on civic leaders and advocates to speak up. I thought Black Lives Matter. Where are all those who stated Black Lives Matter? 18 guns, including one ghost gun, police say, belong to these 20 young men, ranging in age from 17 to 23. According to the Bronx District Attorney and the NYPD's Chief of Detectives and Commander of the Gun Violence Suppression Division, all were part of the G-Side Drilly Gang. These subjects woke up every single day just to live a life exclusively to benefit their gang. They did so violently, investigators say. Over the course of three and a half years, they carried out at least 32 violent crimes, often using the guns you see here, according to prosecutors. It was beefs and, and, and slights and, and disrespects that all drove some of these incidents. That was done, investigators say, 
through drill rap videos made against any perceived threat to the gang. They call people out directly. They make fun of incidents, um, you know, individuals that have perished prior to gunfire, opposing gang members. One of those locations is here on East Fordham Road. You see it's a busy shopping area. Two of the suspects, both under 18 years old, allegedly shot at someone here in the middle of the day. That was in 2020, but it's only blocks away from where 61-year-old Juana Esperanza Soriano de Perdomo was killed by a stray bullet on Monday. What they are doing is good. They are doing really, really, really good job. Residents give credit to law enforcement who are out in force. I got to give the credit for the officers because this is, this is their beginning start. They say there's more work to do and following this 10 month investigation, cops agree. And the best part is there's a lot more to come. Recovered at that scene was a Glock 17 9 mm handgun, three extended Glock type magazines. One was still in the weapon, one under a seat, and one in a backpack. We had 33 discharged shell casings, 15 bullets, five bullet fragments, two detonated smoke grenades, two non detonated smoke grenades, a hatchet a black garbage can, a black milk type style rolling cart, the gasoline, and a U-Haul key. As the NYPD was searching for the suspect in the subway shooting yesterday, there were more than a dozen shootings in the city last night. And not to mention the shootings that we've seen recently of young, innocent people, some older as well, being shot on the streets of New York. How do you get a handle on this crime in the city, Mr. Mayor? By being consistent with our message. Uh, here's my question that I put out to the city. Hey, I thought Black Lives Matter. Where are all those who stated Black Lives Matter? Then go do an analysis of who was killed or shot last night. I was up all night speaking to my commanders in the Bronx, in Brooklyn. The victims were Black. Many of the shooters were Black. So I asked the question that was asking me when I was a child. It's 10 a.m., 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Why are 16, 17, and 18 year olds out in our streets armed with guns 12, one o'clock at night? When are we going to start asking these serious questions? If Black Lives Matter, then the thousands of people I saw on the street when Floyd was murdered should be on the street right now say, stating that the lives of these black children that are dying every night matters. We can't be here. So um, let's get back to Eric Adams, this 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 mayor who spews, who is a Democrat, but he spews conservative and Republican talking points. He's a white man in blackface and a very conservative minded white man. He had 16 shooting victims on a train and they say, what are you going to do about policing? And he says, what about BLM? Is America not smart enough to see him deflecting? The cops are not the answer. Answer, poor people commit crimes out of desperation. Address the poverty. The Republicans don't care, but they'll say, we'll teach you. They'll say, we'll teach you to empower yourselves. Democrats want to keep us handicapped and crippled and on welfare. You know, I have been realistic and outspoken about my commitment to protecting public safety. I stand by that and will continue to do everything in my power to dam the rivers that feed the sea of violence. But this is not only a New York City problem. This rage, this violence, these guns, these relentless shooters are an American problem. 
It is going to take all levels of government to solve it.